Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Hope all is well with you. We're about to get with it. And I am glad to be back in the grace spot. Okay, so let's talk. All right, so we have been discussing understanding gifts all week. And so today I thought it would be interesting if we had a little fun and discussed what the return policy is on some of the relationships in our life. So today we're going to do understanding gifts, the gift of others. What's the return policy? So uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for another opportunity to approach your throne of grace. We ask God that you would be with us, that you would rest with us, that you will rule and abide with us. Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our you are our redeemer. And Lord, we just pray, God, that you speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. Um, let there be less of me and all of you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So what is the return policy on other people? Um, I want to sing a little bit today, but before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the scripture. I think scripture is really important when it comes to understanding gifts, understanding the gifts that other people bring to our lives, understanding the gift that we are in the lives of others, how we steward our gift. And so there are three things that I want to get into before I I get into the devotional piece uh, today. The scriptures come from 1 Peter, the fourth chapter and the 10th verse, and James, the first chapter and the 17th verse. And so the three things that I want you to get is that I want you to see what you give as a gift from God. I want you to see your gift as an opportunity to serve. And I want you to see how, when you give, uh, you are a steward of God's grace. So, First Peter, the fourth chapter and the 10th verse, it says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Another version says, As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Last version, NLT. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. So that is a very poignant scripture. It's basically giving you your place in other people's lives. If you don't understand anything else about the Bible, if you don't understand how to interpret a lot of scripture, that's okay. But understanding your gift and your placement in other people's lives is very important. It's critical, actually, to your life. It's critical to how you think about where you fit in your family, with your friends, on your job, in your relationships, with your spouse, with your mate. Whatever the situation is, you want to be able to understand that it is a gift of God. Number one, you have received a gift to give to others, to serve others. And so in James, we see that every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who who does not change like shifting shadows. Another version says, there's no variation or or shadow due to change. There's no variable, okay? There's no scientific method, no hypothesis to God's goodness. It's, It's standard, it's... It stays the same. It is always good. Another version says, Every good and perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So when you think about flickering lights and you think about the changes of others, God does not change. He gives us these gifts. And then we see it fleshed out how we're supposed to disseminate those gifts to others as stewards. We steward the gift. And we serve others with it. So today, let, let, let's, let's, let's get into this. Um, let me sing a little bit for you. I'm going to sing a little bit of love. Oh, let's see. 
love. There's so many things I've got to tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know how. Cause there's a possibility that you'll look at me differently, love. Ever since the first moment I spoke your name, from then on I knew that by you being in my life, things were destined to change. Cause love. So many people use your name in vain, love. Those who have faith in you sometimes go astray, love. Through all the ups and downs and joys and hurts, love. For better or worse, I still will choose you first. So, let's talk about relationships. When it comes to relationships, have you ever thought about the gift that people are in your life? When I think about relationships as gifts, I think about friendships. Relationships with the opposite sex familial connections and then I also consider it from a status perspective are you single are you married are you divorced or what category would you put yourself in to determine if your relationships are a gift back in 2006 I remember reading a book called getting serious about getting married and the subtitle was something like if singleness is a gift where is the return receipt I think that is a valid question. Oftentimes we get into relationships with other people thinking that it's going to be for life. But sometimes it's for a reason, a season, or just a moment. So what is the return policy on friendships? I think friendships are interesting. When it comes to seeing them as a gift from God and an opportunity to serve and to be a steward of God's grace. Most of my friendships have begun by someone coming up to me and saying, you're going to be my best friend. I can't tell you how many times in my life I've been blessed for people to say that to me and it actually become true. They literally manifested their BFF status in my life. And it was kind of like you experienced love at first sight. You just know that person is meant to be in your life. One of my BFF, she insists that my spouse can be my husband, but she's my soulmate. Well, there's something to be said about that. There are relationships that are simply gifts. They are blessings. They are connections that are deep, that are lasting, and they don't necessarily always happen in marriage. And when I think about the friends that I have acquired over my life, there are very few that I've actually lost. I've lost none to death but also very few to discord and going into a different direction. So do I have a gift receipt for those uh, friends that I've lost, which I use the analogy of a gift receipt as an idea like a return on investment. I remember learning a monologue in theater class in high school. And like most things, I don't forget much. And it goes something like this. I remember my first day of school Mother took me by the hand, and I carried a bouquet of roses, too. Mama let me put the loveliest roses in the garden that day, and the teacher thanked me for them. Then Mama left, and I felt scared, because I'd never been any place before without her. But she told me, teacher will be Mama to me at school and treat me just as nice as she did. So I took my seat with all the other kids, their faces so strange and new to me. And I started talking to a little boy across the aisle. I didn't know it was against the rules. But the teacher came back and slapped me so hard that I cried. I ran to the door because I wanted to run home to mama as quick as I could. But the teacher grabbed me by the hand and pulled me back to my seat and said I was too big a girl to be running home to mama. 
I told teacher I wanted my roses back. And I had to learn to take my punishment when I broke the rules. But I still cried. I told the teacher I wanted my roses back. But she wouldn't give them to me. She shook her finger and said, when I gave away lovely presents, I couldn't expect to get them back. And I guess I never learned that lesson very well. There are still so many things that I want back. I love this monologue because it always reminded me that when you make an investment of time or you give something, you can't always expect to get a return, especially if it's not God ordained. The tricky thing about friendships, that even though you're connected to people, you serve people, you can try to exchange it in your mind and in your heart for what you got from it or what you gave to it. But you can't exchange a relationship. You can't get your time spent. You're not going to get that back. You can say, I'm going to drop this thing back off and ask for what I gave, but you're going to get, you're not going to get that emotional energy back. So what happens when you don't get things back from other people? We really and truly need to remember the scripture that when we serve, we are stewards of God's grace. We didn't bring the grace. We didn't buy the grace. We never paid for the grace, but it is still a gift. It's still an inheritance. So if you consider the gift that you give, your service, and if things don't work out or things go bad, you have to walk away with your love and devotion. You don't have to stop loving that person, but you do have to remember what it has been put here to do and that you are a steward of God's grace and you need to graciously let it go. So, Let's talk a little bit about what you do and what you want in your relationships when they cease. Can you return them? You can't go back to 1998 and say, I'm going to rewrite history and I'm going to recoup my time. What you can do is make sure it doesn't become a monument in your house or in your heart. Don't become a hoarder in your spirit of gifts that you give other people through your time. If you do that, you become a person that is crowded out instead of one that is open to what God might have for you. There are so many beautiful people, so many beautiful spirits in the world. When we don't give God an opportunity to bring fresh awareness, fresh friendships and relationships to our lives, what we are saying is, I liked it the way it was, and I'm not interested in any new and good and perfect gift that comes down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variation. Essentially, what we are saying is, I don't want what you have for me because I liked what I had and it was good enough. But who are we to say what is good enough? Who are we that we are to question the gift of God that he would give to us? Yes, we can long for a relationship and companionship, for friendship. But what if, just what if that person leaving your life or that person that passed away is making room for what God truly has for you for the rest of your life? And that's where I want this devotion to resonate with you today. Ask yourself, how important is it to me that I continue to grow? You don't have to change the core of who you are. There are other people and places that will appreciate you from where you are. If that person is gone, shake the dust from your feet. But how long are you going to be held hostage by the fact that you don't have the gift receipt on a particular relationship? Why is it that you can't get your time back? Well, you can do one of two things. You can develop monuments in your life from previous relationships, or you can see them as movements and move on to the next situation. If an institution does not become a movement, a part of history, where it can find itself relevant, it becomes a monument, a relic, something stoic, 
We see abandoned buildings, abandoned campuses from old factories and universities. They couldn't figure out how to catch up with the times, how to be on the right side of history. So they became a monument in the community, a place to collect dust, dirt, a place where people can hide and all kinds of mischief can be dealt with because it serves no purpose any longer. And there's nothing like vitality in a community when you see an old building going down and something erected that is of value. Yes, we can spend days nostalgic and reflecting on what was there and how good it was. Or we can move on and the return on, on, on your investment is appreciating the experience and taking what it appreciating the experience and taking that experience into the next relationship, but only taking what is worthy, what is necessary, and what will help make that next step, that next situation better. So I challenge you today, don't worry about returning people. Don't worry about recouping your time. Put that energy towards something different, something new that God is bringing into your life. From the very beginning of time, what God had for you is already in you. Your relationships, your ministries, your callings, the gifting is not necessarily new. It's just new to you. It's a new experience for you and it's a new opportunity that God is giving you. So I encourage you to walk into it today. Don't let anything hold you. Or keep you bound. You are a special kind of love to God. And he wants to show you his loving kindness. All the days of your life. Let me pray for you. Dear God. We know we don't have a return receipt. On a lot of things in our life. Singleness. Marriage. Friendships. Becoming parents. Helping our parents. Get into the, the elder part of their life. Whatever it means, God, we, we can't do anything about the time spent. But what we can do is make good on the time we have left. We realize that people are not like things you purchase from a store. And even if we could get that return, what would we appreciate about it? What, what, what could we take away from it? And that's where our hearts need to resonate today. Show us how to appreciate what we have left over. And as we move forward, God, in this day, let every relationship that my brothers and sisters are dealing with be healed, be whole. And even if it has to dissipate, even if it has to be disbanded or let go of God, fill in the crevices of their life. Lord, allow us to see ourselves, our body, our minds, our hearts as gifts to others. And as we steward those gifts, we want your grace to abound. We want your grace to be the number one thing. We know that grace is an unmerited favor, something we could not earn. So, Lord, we pray that the gifts that we give, that we don't look to give things for return, except to say that we have been good stewards over what you gave us. And we'll be careful to honor you and praise you. We look forward to the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are a precious gift from God. And I want you to know today that I love you. But most important of all, God loves you. He wants to see good in your life all the days of your life. So whatever you put out today, remember, you may not sow, you may not reap where you sow, but you will reap what you sow. All right. Have a good day.